Welcome back to our reflection on the Gospel of the following Sunday. And of course the following Sunday today is the Feast of the Body, uh, the body and Blood of Christ, the Corpus Christi. Um, I would like to advise you that we, our newsletter now is appearing every second week, so you'll find that um, regularly on our, our website of uh, lexiodivina.com.au. The reading today is from Mark. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make this preparation for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Again, the context is important here, as usual. Um, it is the Passover time. Some dispute about whether the Last Supper was a Pasch Paschal meal or not, but nevertheless, it certainly took place uh, within the time um, of the Pasch's. I, I think in reading it, we need to look at or note carefully those four words of taking and blessing and breaking and giving. Um, we saw those four words mentioned explicitly in the multiplication of the loaves, so uh, that gave a Eucharistic tone to the multiplication of the loaves. And of course, they're the very things that we, we do in our um, liturgy today. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks. I just wanted to mention that the Greek word for giving thanks is Eucharistine, our word Eucharist. Mm -hmm. So again, from the very origins, we've got the word Eucharist coming in. And then this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Um, I'd like to emphasize the fact that in a sense, the Paschal meal um, was a covenant meal and embodied a covenant sacrifice. In other words, it, it recalled the covenant, the exile, and how God made a covenant with the people. And it recalled the sacrifice of Moses, who killed the bulls and poured the blood on the altar, and then sprinkled the blood on the people. St. Peter, in his letter, addresses the community as those who are sprinkled with the blood of Christ. So Jesus is taking that up, so that really what we do when we celebrate again what took place at the Last Supper um, is happening in our Eucharist. I can remember a time when it could get quite heated if you heard people debate, is the Eucharist a meal or is it a sacrifice? But, but really, it's a sacrificial meal. Um, it is both. And I think that's important. I often ask people, what's the most important presence of Jesus in the, in the Eucharist? And they often say, in the sacred species. But that, that isn't really the truth. Um, in the day of Jesus, if people made a covenant or an agreement, they would offer a sacrifice and then they would eat of the victim that was sacrificed to indicate their agreement and their responsibilities of the covenant. And I think that's captured in what we do, that the reason that the Lord is present in the um, sacred species is to bring us closer to the Lord's unique presence in the Eucharist at the time of the Eucharistic prayer and, and the time of the consecration. So what we do when we take and eat is really not just that we receive, but that we are committing ourselves to the covenant. And we've seen so often that um, that's what religion, faith is about. It's the doing that is important. And of course, 
in giving ourselves there, uh, that then of course we do receive, we have opened ourselves up to receive in a unique way. So, so I think that it's, it's been quite significant that we um, that we, we recall what actually took place, and I think most people don't really understand a lot of the relationship between the the, yeah. the communion and the actual event that takes place yeah. uh, there on the altar. Yeah. And I think this is an occasion and a celebration where we need to bring those two together. Mm. It, it's. It is very complex because it is an extraordinary mystery yes. as well. And I think, as you said, David, it's hard for people to understand the historical and the complexity yes. of this moment. But I, sometimes when you hear the scripture read, other thoughts come into your mind. And I, that expression, the body of Christ, and I'm referring to you, John, here too. When, as lay people, people stand to go to communion, I always get, it, it feels like the moving body of Christ going to the altar to receive the body of Christ. Yeah. <clears throat> and to me there's something absolutely glorious, yes, to receive um, Christ, but just the ordinariness of those people. The, you know, here comes everyone, yeah. the small children, the old, the young, the different nationalities. It's, it's a beautiful, moving um, image to me of the body of Christ. Yes. Yeah. And, and the image of St Paul, we are one body, and so, although it backs up what you're saying, is it? It, it, it? It's a strange sense of unity in a world that's often mm. so divided. Yes. It's great to have a feast like this one mm. on this Sunday, uh, for me anyway, because this is something that we see as the very heart of our faith in, in the Eucharist, and yet there's so much distance, distancing of people from the experience of Mass today. And, uh, you know, though, with um, online and, and all sorts of gatherings, but in that there's not the very heart of where the Word is leading us to, mm -hmm. what we are being nourished on in both, to be able to go and to be and to do. Yes. And it becomes very much rather I walk away from community rather than being drawn into community. And I mean, that can happen for me too. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's something that we take part in so often mm. in our lives, and it's very easy to go through the motions. So it's great just to have both of you reflecting on your own experience and understanding that just challenges me uh, about what I do and share in so often. Yes. Yeah, that it's, you know, I can forget what it's all about and go through the motions. Yes. The, the Greek word that, that um, is translated communion mm. or fellowship. Mm. The, the Protestant tradition has fellowship, fellowship, we have communion, and communion, or you acknowledge it is communion. But the Protestants can say, I go to, to, to the church for fellowship. Yeah. And that's what I don't think people are getting yeah. online. Yeah. That, I guess they're not true. going for fellowship. They're certainly relating to Jesus. Yeah. But the for fellowship, I think, is, is a, it, a very it, important it's part. Incarnational. Of it. It's incarnational. It's flesh. It like we, we're a religion of yeah. Yeah. I think the body, yeah, flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we invite you now to just look at the, um, the text again and remember that. Uh, we are encountering Jesus in the scriptures. What do you think your encounter with Jesus today um, raises in your heart? Welcome back. We invite you now to listen to the text for a second time. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparation for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, 
furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Yes, what I thought I would do was um, try to remind myself every time I receive the body and blood of the Lord that I'm really committing myself to the covenant that was established by his blood. That even knowing that, you don't always realise. And yet that is the most important part of the, um, of the Mass. I mean, the, the, sac the presence of the sacrifice is central, but the presence of the sacrifice is in order that we might commit ourselves to it. And I would like to emphasise that um, Eucharist is the third sacrament of initiation. So it's in that act of going forward and taking and eating that we actually affirm that basic baptismal yeah. confirmation that we made. Uh, I'm struck by the movement in the scripture, uh, this in particular, that it's, as David admitted, in the doing of this sacrament that it becomes um, alive in our hearts. But I do go back to, um, not every Sunday, but many Sundays, there's, a, there's an extraordinary sense of love for that body of Christ as it moves to the altar yes. and comes back to the pew um, that somehow changes you in a way that both the um, host and the, the presence, mm -hmm. but, the, but it's the body gathered that actually changes you as well. And the, and the Vatican Council made the point that the Lord is in the, in the Eucharist presence, in the Eucharist species, but also in the congregation. Yeah. So that presence of the yeah. Lord yeah. pervades the whole situation. Very palpable and yeah, very yeah. grateful for that. Yeah. I mean, I, I've had a lot of opportunities to to deepen my understanding of the Eucharist, but I still don't understand. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of life's journey. But having said that, it's, it's to become more aware of what's happening when, as one who presides over a community's faith when they come for Eucharist, to actually see what's happening and to know that even the little things that I do are, are expressions of a deep faith in the mystery of the community that gathers and what it's gathering around and for. And so even a, um, a bow or the sign of the cross or, you know, your posture, all of this is a sign of my faith in, in, in this incredible mystery. Mm. And, and, um, and I think I just want to kind of sit with that to be more aware of what's happening in the community when I preside at Eucharist. Thanks, John and Virginia. We invite you now to look into the text and to, to draw out something practical, something that can be um, embedded in your life so that the experience of meeting Jesus has enriched your everyday life. We invite you to spend a few moments in prayer. The Lord said, without me you can do nothing. We're working now at the level of the supernatural, and therefore we need the grace of God to give us the courage, the strength, and the will to actually implement what we have chosen. Thank you for being with us. We do appreciate the fact that you give time. Time's a very precious thing these days. But we hope that we are helping you to encounter Jesus um, in the sacrament. And it's not just listening to what we do that is the important thing. This is only meant to facilitate that individual 
meeting with Jesus that is taking place between you and Jesus. We conclude now uh, by the reading of the collect of the prayer from the liturgy of the feast of the body and blood of Christ. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption through Christ our Lord. 